We've talked lately about the negative impacts of artificial intelligence and how algorithms that control so much of our daily lives are biased against us. That includes all the AI impacting our health care. Hospitals use clinical algorithms to help decide who gets what care. Researchers say that they also use a process called race norming or race adjustment, which negatively impacts the care of many black and brown patients. For example, if it says black folks have healthier kidneys than white folks, so we are likely to see delays if we actually need treatment. It's also led to black moms facing more unnecessary C-sections. Another example of the maternal health care gap. And some tech just doesn't seem to work as well on dark skin. That includes oximeters, which estimate the amount of oxygen in our blood. It's kind of important that we get that number right, especially when it comes to critical health care decisions. You can see how all of these issues could lead to worse outcomes for black and Latino patients. So what do we do about it? In New York City, the Department of Health launched the Coalition to End Racism in Clinical Algorithms to tackle the issue. And joining me now to explain is Chief Medical Officer of the New York City Department of Health and Deputy Commissioner of the Center for Health Equity and Community Wellness, Dr. Michelle Morse. Dr. Morse, welcome to Amplified. First, talk to me about race norming or race adjustment. Where did this come from in the first place and how is it contributing to the healthcare gap? Thank you so much, Aisha, for having me on this evening. And thank you for that beautiful explanation that you've given already. Um, this is a practice actually that dates back to the very origins of medicine in many ways. In fact, if you look at the research done by Lundy Braun, Dr. Lundy Braun, she looked specifically at lung function and the way that we measure lung function to this day in 2022 21st century actually dates back to white male doctors in the mid 19 in the mid 1800s uh, using um, tests to measure lung function as a way to justify slavery because what they did was oh they tried God. to measure lung function in a way that demonstrated actually that black people's lung function was different but in fact it wasn't race at all it was the environmental conditions everything from diet to environment to exposure to other things those are the things that really shape uh, lung function it's not a biological difference. And unfortunately, the myth that race leads to biological differences or is a part of biological differences is still a commonly believed myth in medicine today. In fact, it's taught in medical schools and nursing schools all across the country. Mm, my goodness. So if the idea behind this um, AI tech was to eliminate human racism from the medical process, but that didn't work, it really highlights the importance of representation in the medical field, I think. I was actually just speaking to Dr. Raymond Givens earlier in the show about its impor how important it is to have a doctor who looks like you. So is part of the solution a more diverse medical field overall? That is a phenomenal question. In fact, uh, often what we see is people who've been doing health equity and health justice research for a long time, many of them are people of color in medicine, and many of them are much more able and honestly uh, qualified to be able to talk about why these algorithms cause a problem. In fact, as you know, uh, a field like medicine that's been around for such a long time, there's a lot of information that just get gets copy pasted forward without being questioned and people of color are much more likely to question the existing science and so yes i think it is definitely true that having more people of color in the healthcare field is going to allow for us to have a more just and equitable healthcare system. Um, and in fact, Dr. Lindy Braun, who I mentioned herself is a black woman physician. She has bravely done a lot of this work and many of the other scholars who are leading the call to end race adjustment in clinical mm -hmm. algorithms are also people of color. So I think your uh, theory is absolutely correct that having more people of color in medicine and in healthcare is going to help uh, get us to health equity. You know, it is frightening to me to learn that some actual medical equipment diagnoses differently on black and brown skin, and yet 
we're still using it. We've seen some big tech companies actually abandon racist uh, AI lately, um, namely facial recognition software, which has you know, really uh, been attacked. And so I wonder, what's the deal with these medical devices that are still being sold? Um, they're going to be around to impact our health care and treatment probably from, for some time. So how do we speed up some accountability and adjustment here where it's needed? That's a great question. One of the devices that you're talking about is the pulse oximeter. It is a device that helps to measure oxygen levels in blood. And that is one of the devices that we use very commonly right now um, because of COVID, in fact. But even before COVID, COVID mm -hmm. this was one of the most commonly used devices in medicine and in healthcare. And there had been research in the past showing that it's not as accurate on people uh, who have pigmented, more pigmented skin, more melanin in their skin. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, the calls were not as effective in changing those devices and bringing attention to this issue. But now I would say because of the murder of George Floyd and this once in 50 year racial justice movement and the once in a century pandemic that we're in right now, the convergence of those two things, I think, has led to a window of opportunity where even issues that we've known been an issue for a long time are now getting renewed attention and renewed action. And so even though it is true mm. that that device in particular, the pulse oximeter, um, is not as accurate for people um, who have darker skin, what is happening now actually is there are more calls and more interest in testing new devices on various Mm. Like, uh, colors of skin. Um, and that is, I think, uh, maybe too late, unfortunately. Right. I wish that that had been done earlier because uh, who knows how Before many Before they went to market, maybe? That would have been a great time <laughs> to do it. Um, and and yet, uh, at the same time, we can make these changes now. And so to be able to test devices like pulse oximeters on a wide diversity of uh, racial and ethnic backgrounds and skin color, I think is uh, a call to action that many of us mm. in medicine are really uh, amplifying and are ensuring that researchers are considering mm. these kinds mm -hmm. of things in the work that they're doing. But again, more people of color in medicine yep. would make it even easier to make those calls more widespread. So um, I'm so glad I that you're putting attention to I have 30 seconds left with you. I have 30 okay. seconds left with you, and I want you to quickly just tell us what the coalition is up to uh, and their work to get rid of the racist algorithms in healthcare. Yes, well, as Chief Medical Officer for the Health Department, it is an honor to convene 12 institutions across the whole city so that every institution across New York City can say, we want to end race adjustment in clinical algorithms, and our coalition to end racism in clinical algorithms is working actively on kidney function, lung function, and uh, cesarean section rates as three key areas to intervene and to end race adjustment so that we can have more equitable mm. outcomes in all three of those areas across the whole entire city. That is awesome. Dr. Michelle Moore is Chief Medical Officer of the New York City Department of Health and Deputy Commissioner of the Center for Health Equity and Community Wellness. Thank you so much for joining me tonight on Amplified. Appreciate you.